Good evening, peeps. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Hopefully, all things considered in this crazy world we're currently living in, hopefully you're all doing all right. Hopefully. All right, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget as well to like and share the vids. It all helps. So thank you to everyone that is doing that. Um, you know, I was on the transfer show today on Sky Sports and... Um, Obviously, we're prepping for transfers, right? There's not been many transfers, but we're trying to do a bit of research. So the way it works, you get there at like 6.37 in the morning. You're prepping for like three and a half hours. So the show starts at 10, so you're prepping. Not intense, but you're prepping nonetheless. And literally, I would say, so I've prepped. I've prepped a lot. I prepped the night before. I prepped on the show, or sorry, prior to the show. And literally about 10 minutes into the show, breaking news, Frank Lampard has been sacked. And I can't, like, I can't tell you the, the chaos that's going on behind the scenes. So obviously I've got my earpiece in and you're hearing everything. Stop, stop the show, like literally break, but it is mad, it's going off mad. And then they're like, Addy, how much do you know about Frank Lampard and Thomas Tuchel? We're gonna go to all, literally the transfer show stopped and it was just Frank Lampard, Chelsea, PSG, Thomas Tuchel, what do you know, react. And um, it's strange. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the clips, but so my presenter, we're going to talk boxing, I promise you. My presenter is there and he's breaking the news to the cameras. And as soon as he breaks the news, I'm literally on my laptop like that, trying to find anything I can to hold a conversation. All right, let's talk boxing. Firstly, you know what? Well, secondly, thank you everyone that jumped on the live stream. Mmm, that's good coffee. Thank you to everyone that jumped on the live stream on Sunday, everyone that asked questions, all the super chat people, all the new subscribers. Thank you. It was fun. Um, I re you know, I really enjoy. I really enjoy the non-boxing talk sometimes. Like we talked about Sylvester fucking Stallone. How did we get to Sylvester Stallone? I have no idea. All right, you know what I want to talk about? Ryan Garcia, Manny Pacquiao. Um, now, we touched on this subject on the live stream, but I thought it was just a load of BS. I'm not quite sure it is now. Ryan Garcia has put the poster up on his uh, social medias. It's got a lot of retweets, a lot of likes, a lot of love. That He thinks, or by his stance, the fight's been made. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where we stand with this. Um, we've not heard from Golden Boy, right? We've not heard from any. I don't think Manny Pacquiao's even said anything. Stand to be corrected, but I don't think he has. Um, now, bear in mind, this has gone live, this news, just after Conor McGregor lost. So I do wonder if Conor was the first real option for Manny Pacquiao and Ryan was kind of waiting in the wings. Again, I'm just making this up as I go along. I don't know what is factual. I don't know what is bullshit. Just have to put that out there. So I don't know if Ryan was waiting in the wings. Conor lost. Okay, Ryan, you're in. I don't know. Uh, let's not forget as well, him and him and Javante Davis are going back and forth just after the Luke Campbell win. And um, Ryan was sort of egging for that fight. Javante was also doing the same. But then he did say, well, you know what? I'm not going to fight Javante because I've actually got something bigger. And everyone was like, ah, you're ducking Javante. Well, clearly this is what he was referring to. Um, so that is that. Ryan Garcia, has put up, Ryan Garcia sorry, has put it on his social medias. I, again, I don't know. It's a fan-made poster. That's what it looks like anyway. But he seems to be confident that he is fighting Manny Pacquiao. Weird, right? All right, let's... Is that good or bad? Because a few people have asked me this question. It's great for Ryan Garcia. Great for Ryan Garcia. I've seen Devin Haney and Javante say things like, oh, well, Ryan's obviously ducking us. Like, you know, I've seen De Devin say something like, Ryan versus Luke was supposed to be the winner fights me. Now he's fighting Pac-Man, duck. Javante's come out and said, you're ducking me, you're fighting pac You don't turn down a fucking Manny Pacquiao fight. Do you know how many people want that fight? <laughs> like, it's not a case of ducking anyone. If Manny Pacquiao calls, if you weigh between 135 and 154 even, you take the fight. You drop everything you're doing and you take the Manny Pacquiao fight. Everyone wants... Amir Khan's been gunning for this fight for 10 years. Errol Spence wants it. Right, Keith Furman wants the ream. Every single person wants the Manny Pacquiao fight. So it's not a case of Ryan's trying to duck Devon or Ryan's trying to duck Javante. 
Ryan, if Ryan has got the call for Manny Pacquiao, Ryan should go to Manny Pacquiao. I have absolutely no problem with him taking this fight. It's a dream fight. Why would you not want to? It's an absolute dream fight for him. Um, he has a lot to lose because Manny Pacquiao could easily knock him out. Manny Pacquiao, off the, um, off the tomato sauce, could easily knock him out. Mm. Sorry, all the slurping. I know people hate that shit, don't you? Um, yeah, so he doesn't turn it down. I think I have a bit of a problem, and this is a bit wrong because Manny Pacquiao's given us so much, but I think I have a bit of a problem with Manny Pacquiao fighting Ryan Garcia. Does that make sense? Like, so I have no problem with Ryan fighting M Manny. Ryan should take the fight. It's a big money fight, take the fight, legacy fight, all that kind of stuff. I have a, I have a problem with Manny Pacquiao wanting to fight Ryan. I do. I have a problem with Manny Pacquiao, who is a champ, I think we forget that sometimes, at 147, what is it, WBA 147 champ, fighting a guy from 135. They have a problem with that. People might reference things like about Floyd fought Marquez and all that. I, that yeah, I, I, didn't, I had a problem with that as well. But I have a bit of a problem with that. If Manny Pacquiao wants to fight a guy from 135, vacate your WBA. Don't hold up the division. He's not fought. I'm going to get this wrong now. Let me quickly check. I think it's August 2019. So he's not defended that belt. And that was the belt that he um, won when he fought. Well, he had the reg he had the regular at the time, didn't he? So, but that's the belt he won when he fought um, Keith Furman. When was that? I'm, I'm thinking it was the summer of 2019, you know? Yeah, July 2019. That's the last time Manny Pacquiao fought. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't have a belt for that long and not fight. You can't. That's a year and a half, peeps. You can't have a belt for that long and not fight. And then the fight you are going to have, again, this is all in the air. We are pissing in the wind right now. But the fight is going to be Ryan Garcia. That can't work. Vacate, then have your fight against Ryan, if that's what you want to do. If that's what you want to do, fine. You want to fight Ryan? Fine. But just don't fight him and sort of hold up a division. There are other people that want that belt. Let them have that belt. Right, Terence Crawford would love to fight for that vacant belt, and I'd love Terence to fight for it. And then whoever Terence fights and wins, because he probably will win, he then finds Errol for all the marbles. Everything's on the table. That's what should happen. That's what should happen. If not, Manny Pacquiao should be fighting Keith again, maybe a rematch, Errol, Terence, anyone, Sean, anyone. Just that's what he should be doing. So, um, yeah, no problem with Ryan doing it. I have a bit of problem with Manny Pacquiao doing it. That's that's my that's my issue with it all. What do you guys you guys do have you do you guys does anyone have an issue with Manny Pacquiao fighting Ryan Garcia? I have a problem, man. Don't like it. Don't like it. And again, I'm probably contradicting myself here because I'm saying I don't blame Ryan. It's not like I like the fight. I just don't blame Ryan for taking it because every fighter, like I said, every fighter at 135 would take it. Every fight at 140 would take it. Every single fight at 147 would take it. And there are some guys at 154 that will try and kill themselves to get into a 150 or 149 weight to fight him as well. It's Manny Pacquiao. These are fights that you just don't turn down. But Manny Pacquiao should not be fighting Ryan Garcia. That's that. That is that. All right, let's have a look and see if there are any stories. <laughs> look at this one from Haney. Haney's a bit funny, man. I was watching him in Max on Boxing. Chat's a lot of doo-doo. Not a lot, but a bit of doo-doo. Uh, Devin Haney. Let's continue the Ryan Garcia talk. Ryan Garcia wants Tank because he thinks it's easier than fighting me. I don't think Tank is easier. <laughs> I don't think it is, Devin. Like, I don't, like, no. No. I don't think he's watched your Gamboa performance and it scared him and he's thought, you know what, I'd rather fight Tank after seeing Tank literally nearly kill Leo Santa Cruz. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, I know that was at 1.30, but hey. So he's gonna watch your Gamboa performance and think, oh my God, no, can't fight you. And he's gonna watch Tank's performance against Javon, against Leo and think, yeah, yeah, let, let's run to that instead because that's easier. Let, let's run to that, a guy that can literally take my head off. Whereas Devon, who doesn't look like he has much pop at one at one thirty, he's, he's going to be scared of you. So one thirty five, doubt it, bro. I doubt it very, very much. Mm. Um, Keith Furman, I don't know if Danny Garcia has that dog in him anymore. 
Dude, you haven't fought since August 2019. I can't even look at the camera, I'm so angry. You haven't fought since August 2019. And you're saying you don't think he has any dog in him. He just fought Errol. You haven't fought since August 2000. You didn't want no piece of Errol. But all of a sudden, you don't think he's got dog in him. Dude, you've not fought for 18 months. Yet you're questioning his dog. The audacity of some boxers, yeah? Like, I watched that Danny. Got, Danny was trying. Danny was digging. Danny was good. Every single, like, Errol won the rounds. Like, you know when you could, you, like, you could score that fight. I'm not joking. You could have some fights at 120, 108, and they do not tell the story of the fight. The guy just could be winning every single round. Close rounds, 10-9. Danny was doing well in every single round. Errol was just doing better. The fuck out of here, Keith Furman. Don't know if he has a... You ain't, you ain't fought for a year and a half. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's read a couple of last bits. And then we shall... <laughs> Sergei <laughs> Kovalev fell second test for synthetic testosterone. Testosterone. That B sample came back quick. <laughs> oh, Ade, you don't, don't, Ade, don't go back to your old ways, my man. I'm, I'm cool now. I'm calm now. Don't let me. Don't let, don't let the dog come out of me again. I'm a different Ade now. I'm, I'm a bit older, a bit wiser, eh? I'm a bit older and a bit wiser. And I work for broadcasters now. Boy. All right, last couple of bits. Uh, Frank Warren, Heron Frampton is the kind of fight we like, a tough 50-50 fight. It is. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be any crowd there for it, though, which is a massive shame. If, and it will be, Heron Frampton's behind closed doors with no crowd, massive shame. And it's going to be, right? Because of where we are right now in the world. What a shame that is. What a shame. Unless, is it in America? One second. I don't think it is. It's not, is it? Sorry, peeps. I know a lot of you guys are screaming at a, it's not. Well, it doesn't have a date here. I mean, a venue here to be. No, I think it isn't in, I think it is in the UK. Yeah, it is in the UK. It's just not confirmed where yet, I don't think. Mm. That's a shame. That's a shame, no fans. Mm. It's a shame as well for Heron. Like, aside from people might say it's a shame for Frampton because he doesn't got that fan support. Even Heron would want to fight in an atmosphere like the O2 Arena 20,000. Those are the kind of things you want. Those are the kind of things um, that he'll be, that you'll remember when it's, when it's all said and done. Yeah, I went to the UK and fought in front of 20,000. It was crazy. And the UK fans, when it's all said and done after the fight, look, before the fight, yeah, they'll boo you as you come out. When it's all said and done, though, they show you their respects. I mean, most guys that have fought in the UK always talk about how much they loved fighting in the UK just because of the noise, the crowd. They really get behind the fighters. So it's a shame that Heron misses out on that as well. Um, Devin Haney says, I'll fight... Uh, Javier Fortuna or Jorge Linares next if Tiafimo ducks me. This is why, this is why I can't, Tiafimo's ducking you. <laughs> Tiafimo that's fought Richard Comey and Vasil Lomachenko is ducking Devin Haney. Yeah, sure he is, mate. Of course he is. Mm. Mm. Look, he's frustrated, the kid, because everyone else is like, your belt was emailed to you. You fought no one. Everyone's fought someone. You haven't done that. Take it. Take it like a man. Take it on the chin. And when you do fight them, then talk. For now, though, you haven't done much in the division. You haven't done much. Um, okay, this is very interesting. Very interesting. Let's talk about this one. Mm. Um, Bellew explains why Joshua's win over Klitschko is more impressive than Fury's win. Now, I don't, I don't need to go into the story and click. Let's just throw it out there. What was more impressive? For me, for me, 
Both are very, very impressive. I hate comparing the two because both completely different performances. Tyson Fury went out there to Germany, away soil, away soil. It counts for something. It really does against a guy that at the time was unbeaten for nearly nine, 10 years. That, that alone, just those two things, regardless of the performance, just those two things are very, very big in this argument. Joshua fought a guy that was on his turf, Wembley. All those people are Joshua fans now. All the 90, 80, whatever thousand are Joshua fans. They're all there for you. Um, and he fought the guy coming off a loss and a year and a half, whatever it was, layoff. Those, those count against AJ a little bit. They, they shouldn't, but they do if you're making a real proper argument. Um, AJ stopped him, though. AJ got rid of him. That's big. Fury outboxed him. But that's just who they are. Do you know what I mean? AJ is the bruiser, the one that does the knockouts, the destroyer. So if he's going to get rid of Klitschko, it's going to be that way. If Fury's going to get rid of Klitschko, he's going to do it his way. So both of their performances, for me, are exactly the same because Fury done it the way he was always going to do it and AJ done it the way he was always going to do it. The reason why Fury's is better than AJ's is because of what I mentioned first. He was away from home and the guy was unbeaten for like nine, ten years or whatever it was. So Fury's is better. But in terms of the performances, for me, they're exactly the same because Fury done how he is going to do, outbox you, embarrass you. Yeah, it was boring, but that's what he's going to do. AJ's going to do what he's going to do. Destroy. Seek and destroy. Um, I'll give AJ another pointer up. So if it's like if it's like that, and Fury was like that because he's away, I'll go AJ like that because AJ got up off the canvas, had a fucking gut check and dug deep. People might say things like, oh, Klitschko let him off the, let him off the hook. He still had to get off the canvas and dig deep against a puncher in Klitschko. So Fury's is better, just, but don't dismiss AJ's. Please don't do that. Getting off the canvas. Hmm. <laughs> as much as I say things like, yeah, he's, he's on home soil and it's 90,000 people. 90,000 people ain't fighting for you in the ring. In that ring, it's you versus him. Mano, mano. And he got put down hard. <laughs> hard, hard. All right. Are we done? I think we're done, people. Then. Mandem, are we done? We're done. Peace and love.